Hello again! With Thanksgiving coming up very soon, I wanted to compile all of my best holiday recipes and this video is all about the vegan appetizers and sides. My last video, I gave you four of my favorite Thanksgiving dinner recipes, so if you missed that, make sure you check it out. All of the recipes that are mentioned in this video are also on my website, so I will post links in the description below if you want to follow along. There'll also be some timestamps down there in case you want to skip to a particular recipe. All right, so our first recipe is cranberry crostini, which is made with cashew cheese, cranberry sauce, and walnuts. This one is super easy and you can also make extra of the cranberry sauce to serve with dinner. But I personally never want to overlook the appetizers on Thanksgiving because I think it's always great to have something to snack on while dinner is still being prepared. So let's go to that recipe now. So the first thing we're gonna do is make that cranberry sauce. I'm gonna start by dicing one and a half cups of onion and mincing two cloves of garlic. Then I'm gonna melt three tablespoons of vegan butter in a large saute pan over medium heat. And I'm gonna add my onion and let it cook for about 15 minutes, stirring every so often. After about 15 minutes, the onion should be turning just a little bit brown. At that point, I wanna add my garlic and let it cook for another five minutes. If your cranberry sauce starts getting too dry at any point, you can add a splash of water to keep it from drying out. Now I'm going to turn the heat down to medium low and I'll just give it a few minutes for the pan to cool off. If you don't let it cool, your cranberry juice might evaporate as soon as it hits the pan. So once it's cooled, then I'm going to add 3 eighths of a cup, or that's also 6 tablespoons, each of cranberry juice and brown sugar. Make sure you're using pure cranberry juice here and not cranberry juice cocktail. So I'm just going to stir that up a bit until the sugar is dissolved. Now I'm going to add 3 quarters of a teaspoon of red wine vinegar and 1 and a quarter cups of fresh cranberries. I'll turn the heat back to medium just until the juices start to boil and then I'll turn it down to simmer for about 15 minutes. The cranberry should start getting soft before the 15 minutes is up. At that point, I'm going to use my potato masher to mash them up. I want to end up with a jelly-like consistency for my cranberry sauce, so if it's too thick, I'll add some water. If it's too thin, I'll let it cook a little bit longer. Keep in mind, though, that it will thicken up as it cools, so don't overcook it. The cranberry sauce is almost done. I'm just going to add a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, mix it up, and then set it aside. Now, let's get to the crostini making. I just have a regular baguette here, and I am going to slice it diagonally. Anywhere from half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick is perfect for crostini. Now, I'm going to spray the slices on both sides with olive oil, and then place them in a single layer on a baking sheet. I'll put them under the low broiler for two minutes and then turn them over and broil the other side for another two minutes. All that's left to do now is the assembly. So I am gonna take some cashew cheese. I have Miyoko's cream cheese here. You can also use tree line cashew cheese. That's a really good one if you wanna use that. So I will spread some cashew cheese on top and then top that with a spoonful of cranberry sauce. Now at this point, if you wanna put some fresh parsley or thyme on top, you can do that. I like walnuts on mine, so I'm gonna use those. And we are done. Mm. I love this contrast between the creamy cashew cheese and the acidity of the cranberry sauce. It all just goes together so perfectly. Okay, so our next recipe is a loaded baked potato recipe. There are a ton of ways to make a loaded baked potato, but mine has a little bit of a Tex-Mex vibe with tomatoes, black beans, corn, jalapenos, and some vegan cheese. It is so delicious. I highly recommend that you try this recipe. So the first thing we need to do is bake the potatoes. I'm preheating my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and then I'm washing four medium-sized rusted potatoes and using a fork to poke holes in them. When you're choosing your potatoes, try to find four that are similar in size and evenly shaped so that you'll have a nice looking potato that won't roll over on your plate. Next, I'm gonna coat the potatoes with some spray oil. 
I'm using olive oil spray, but choose whatever oil you like. And then I'll sprinkle some salt on the skins. If you're not gonna eat the skins, you don't need to add salt. It's just there for flavor. And I know some people like to wrap their potatoes in foil to bake them. I actually tested baking them with and without foil and there was no discernible difference between the two. So since the results were basically the same, I didn't use foil. And these are gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I'm taking them out, flipping them to the other side, and I'll put them back in for another 30 minutes more to finish baking. When they're finally done, I will just use some oven mitts to press on the corners here to make sure that they're actually done. They should be a little soft when you press on them. And I'm gonna set those aside to let them cool until they can be handled, which is about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, I will make my black bean and veggie topping. So to my bowl here, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of chopped Roma tomato, half a cup of black beans, a quarter cup of frozen corn kernels, and one chopped jalapeno. And then I'll mix that all well. I sometimes add about a tablespoon of chopped cilantro as well, but it didn't look very fresh in the store, so I skipped it this time. And now I'm gonna season this with some salt and pepper to taste and mix it up well again. All right, my potatoes are cool enough now, so I'm gonna start slicing off the tops. I'm cutting the top quarter or so off the potato lengthwise just to create an opening on the top. Some people prefer to cut the potatoes in half and you could do that as well, but you might need some more toppings since you're gonna have eight halves instead of four mostly whole potatoes. Next, I'm gonna scoop the flesh out of the potatoes and into a large bowl. I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch border around the skin to make sure it holds its shape and doesn't break or fall apart. And we're left with these lovely shells which will hold our potato filling and our toppings. So now I'm gonna add a quarter cup of vegan butter to my potato flesh bowl along with a quarter cup of vegan sour cream. I'm using Kite Hill, which is my favorite, and then I'm adding a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper as well. And I'll just mash that all up together. It's really up to you how smooth or chunky you wanna make it. Just make sure that everything gets mixed up well. And as you can see, I started off with a fork, but quickly needed to switch over to a potato masher to get everything really well combined. So the last thing I'll add to the filling is 3 eighths of a cup of vegan cheese. I usually use Miyoko's cheddar shreds, but I could not find them, and I saw that Chow had a Mexican cheese blend, so I decided to try that and see how it compares. And I'm just gently folding the shreds into the filling to get them distributed throughout. All right, now I'm just putting all this filling back into the shells. Since you're putting more stuff in than you took out, the shells are gonna be really full. So I try to really pack the filling in there so that there's still room for the toppings. And when it's full, then I just use the back of the spoon to create a well at the center to hold the toppings in place. Next, I'm gonna put some vegan cheese on top of the potatoes, but I'm gonna melt it on the stove first so that it gets a lot meltier than it can get in the oven. Is meltier a word? I don't think so, but let's go with it. It can take a few minutes for the cheese to melt, so be patient and just keep stirring it the whole time. It'll typically start to melt all at once and turn into a stretchy ball. I didn't really know what to expect from this cheese since I never used it before, but it melted okay. It's a little more blob-like than the Miyoko's or the Violife, but it's usable. Once it melts, you have to work fast to spread it on top of the potatoes before it cools too much. So just take a spoon and spread it from side to side so it looks all stretchy and yummy. Then I'm gonna put my beans and veggies on top of that. And I'll use the back of my spoon again to really press this stuff down into the well so it stays in place. Now these will go back onto the baking tray and into the oven for another 15 minutes to warm up. You're probably gonna have some extra black beans and veggies left over, so I like to pile them on top of the potato tops and eat them as a snack while I'm waiting for the potatoes to finish. You could also make a salsa with it, just add some lime juice, agave, and hot sauce, and use it as a dip for chips or whatever you like. 
All right, these are almost ready now. I'm just gonna add a dollop of my Kite Hill sour cream to the tops. You should wait to do this until right before you're ready to serve them because the sour cream can start to melt if you leave it on there for too long. And then I will sprinkle some chopped green onions on top or you could use chives here too. And they're ready to be served. All right, let's see how these turned out. Mm. Yep, delicious as usual. <laughs> as far as my verdict on the chow Mexican cheese, it was fine if it's all you can get, but the Miyoko's has more flavor and melted better. And I would choose Violife over the chow as well. Of the three, the chow is my third choice. But the potatoes were still super flavorful. There's a little bit of crunchiness from the veggies that pairs so nicely with the smooth potato filling. Try them out, I'm sure you will love them. And finally, if you are a soup person, you are going to love this pumpkin and carrot soup. It is so flavorful with ginger, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and then it has cashew cream for a super rich texture. So let's get right into the ingredients for that recipe. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is five and a half cups of low sodium vegetable broth, and then we need 21 ounces of pumpkin cubes, which is about the amount you're gonna get from a two pound pumpkin. This could be a pie pumpkin, it could be a butternut squash. This here is actually a Taiwanese pumpkin, so whatever pumpkin you have works. Um, and to prepare this, you're gonna wanna cut it in half lengthwise, scoop out the seeds, slice off the skin, and then cut it into cubes. You're also gonna need one and a half pounds of peeled and chopped carrots. This is the weight of the carrots after peeling, not before. And one teaspoon of ginger root, peeled and grated. Three quarters of a cup of cashews. And you're gonna wanna pre-soak these in hot water for 10 minutes. Um, just make sure that you measure before you soak the cashews because you can see these have expanded and this is more than three quarters of a cup right now. And finally, three quarters of a cup of water and then for seasoning, we've got one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and salt and pepper to taste. Okay, so I've got my soup pot here and I am just adding in my vegetable broth over medium heat and then I'm just gonna add in my seasonings, not including the salt and pepper, and whisk it up a bit. If you cannot eat spicy things, you can leave out the red pepper flakes. This soup is still delicious without it. Okay, so next I'm gonna add in my carrot, pumpkin, and ginger, and then I'm gonna bring it to a boil, then lower the heat, cover, and let it simmer for 30 minutes. All right, so while my veggies are getting nice and soft over here, I am going to blend up my cashews and water into a cashew cream, which is the key to taking the soup to the next level of creaminess. All right, well, my veggies have been cooking for 30 minutes now, so they are nice and soft, and that means we're actually almost done. This mixture of broth and veggies needs to get blended up. So if you have an immersion blender, you could use that. Um, I'm actually going to transfer this mixture over to my blender. My blender isn't large enough to do it in one batch, so I am going to need to do it in two batches. If that's the case for you, don't worry too much about how much pumpkin and carrot and broth the proportions that you're getting in the blender. If it's different from one batch to the other, it's not a big deal because it's just gonna get mixed up back together anyway. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna blend that up until it's nice and smooth. Also, the soup is hot, so you don't wanna completely seal off your blender. Make sure that you take off that center cap before you close up your blender. You can put a paper towel over it to make sure that nothing splatters out. And then we will mix both of those batches back together in the pot. <laughs> All right, so we've already got a pretty nice soup texture, but let's make it ultra creamy. Let's add that cashew cream. I have measured out one 
cup of the cashew cream and I'm gonna mix that right in. At this point, you could also add your salt and pepper to taste. I couldn't get low sodium vegetable broth here in Taiwan, uh, so I'm gonna skip the salt and actually just add some pepper here. But remember, it is a big soup, so you'll probably wanna add more than you think. Just make sure that you're tasting it as you add it. So that's it. The only thing left to do is serve it. If you didn't notice, I still do have a little bit of cashew cream left over. So I'm gonna put the soup in the bowl and then I'm gonna spoon some of this cashew cream right on top of the soup in a little swirl pattern. And then I'm gonna top it with some pumpkin seeds and red pepper flakes. What I love about this soup is the flavors of the ginger and pumpkin and carrot all just complement each other so nicely. And then you've got that cinnamon and nutmeg in there too. And the cashew cream, this creaminess, it's just the cherry on top. All right, well, that's it for this one. I really hope this has been helpful if you're looking for some sides to complete your vegan Thanksgiving dinner table. I do still have one more video coming up with Thanksgiving desserts, so make sure you subscribe to catch that video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.